Biblia Theca Historica, Beta Iota Beta Lambda Iota Omicron Theta Kappa Eta Sigma Tau Omicron Rho Iota Kappa, Historical Library, is a work of universal history by Diodorus Siculus. It consisted of 40 books, which were divided into three sections. The first six books are geographical in theme, and describe the history and culture of Egypt, Book I, of Mesopotamia, India, Scythia, and Arabia, II, of North Africa, III, and of Greece and Europe, IV, VI. In the next section, Book Seven, Seventeen, he recounts the history of the world starting with the Trojan War, down to the death of Alexander the Great. The last section, Book 17 to the end, concerns the historical events from the successors of Alexander down to either 60 BC or the beginning of Caesar's Gallic War in 59 BC. The end has been lost, so it is unclear whether Diodorus reached the beginning of the Gallic War, as he promised at the beginning of his work, or, as evidence suggests, old and tired from his labors he stopped short at 60 BC. He selected the name Bibliotheca in acknowledgement that he was assembling a composite work from many sources. The authors he drew from, who have been identified, include, Hecateus of Abdera, Tizias of Nidus, Ephorus, Theopompus, Hieronymus of Cardia, Tyrus of Samos, Dialus, Philistus, Timius, Polybius, and Posidonius. Diodorus' immense work has not survived intact we have the first five books and books 11 through 20. The rest exists only in fragments preserved in Photius and the excerpts of Constantine Porphyrogenitus. The earliest date Diodorus mentions is his visit to Egypt in the 180th Olympiad, between 60 and 56 BC. This visit was marked by his witnessing an angry mob demand the death of a Roman citizen who had accidentally killed a cat, an animal sacred to the ancient Egyptians, Bibliotheca Historica 1.41, 1.83. The latest event Diodorus mentions is Octavian's vengeance on the city of Taurimenium, whose refusal to help him led to Octavian's naval defeat nearby in 36 BC, 16.7. Diodorus shows no knowledge that Egypt became a Roman province which transpired in 30 BC so presumably he published his completed work before that event. Diodorus asserts that he devoted 30 years to the composition of his history, and that he undertook a number of dangerous journeys through Europe and Asia in prosecution of his historical researches. Modern critics have called this claim into question, noting several surprising mistakes that an eyewitness would not be expected to have made. Work In the Bibliotheca Historica, Diodorus covers world geography and history. Geography the first five books are geographical in theme. They describe the history and culture of different regions as follows. Book I, Egypt. This book on Egypt covers the origin of the world, the land of Egypt, the river Nile and its annual floods, the kings, customs and religion of the country. Book II, The East. In this book Diodorus describes the geography of Mesopotamia, India, Scythia, and Arabia. Book Three. North Africa. Fire setting in a mine, as shown by George Agricola in his De Re Metallica, 1556. In this book, Diodorus describes the geography of North Africa including Ethiopia, the gold mines of Egypt, the Persian Gulf and Libya, where he cites mythical figures including the Gorgons, Amazons, Ammon, and Atlas. Based on the writings on Agatharchides, Diodorus describes gold mining in Egypt, with horrible working conditions. And those who have been condemned in this way and they are a great multitude and are all bound in chains work at their task unceasingly both by day and throughout the entire night. For no leniency or respite of any kind is given to any man who is sick, or maimed, or aged, or in the case of a woman for her weakness, but all without exception are compelled by blows to persevere in their labors, until through ill treatment they die in the midst of their tortures. Diodorus mentions a mining method called fire setting to weaken and break down hard gold ores by thermal shock. The hard ores were then crushed manually and then ground to a fine dust in querns, and washed to extract the gold dust. The Book of Job mentions mining processes almost identical to that described by Diodorus, indicating a Jewish acquaintance with the Egyptian mining industry. Book 4, Greek Mythology In this book, 
Diodorus describes the mythology of Greece. He narrates the myths of Dionysus, Priapus, the Muses, Heracles, the Argonauts, Medea, the hero Theseus and the Seven against Thebes. Book V, Europe In this book, Diodorus describes the geography of Europe. He covers the islands of Sicily, Malta, Corsica, Sardinia, and the Balearic Islands. He then covers Britain, Basilea, Gaul, Spain, and the regions of Liguria and Tyrrhenia in the Italian peninsula. Finally he describes the islands of Achira and Punchia in the Southern Ocean, and the Greek islands. History In Book 6, 17, Diodorus recounts the history of the world starting with the Trojan War, down to the death of Alexander the Great. Book 6, X survive only in fragments, which cover events before and after the Trojan War including the stories of Bellerophon, Orpheus, Aeneas, and Romulus, some history from cities including Rome and Cyrene, tales of kings such as Croesus and Cyrus, and mentions of philosophers such as Pythagoras and Zeno. Book 11 covers the history of Greece from 480 BC with the attempted invasion by Xerxes, and describes the Athens of Themistocles. Book 12, from 450 BC, covers wars of Athens, including the Peloponnesian War. Book 13, from 415 BC, tells of the defeat of Athens at Syracuse, the subsequent war with Sparta, and the war between Carthage and Sicily. Book 14, from 404 BC, covers the Thirty Tyrants of Athens, the death of Socrates, and the capture of Rome by the Gauls. Book 15 covers wars in Greece including the Boeotian War and wars with Thebes. Book 16, from 360 BC, describes Philip of Macedon and Artaxerxes. Book 17 covers Alexander the Great from his rise to power to his campaigns in the East and his death in Babylon. The last section, volumes 18 to the end, concerns the historical events from the struggles of Alexander's successors, through the wars between Rome and Carthage, down to either 60 BC or the beginning of Caesar's Gallic War in 59 BC. Diodorus is mentioned briefly in Pliny the Elder's Natural History as being singular among the Greek historians for the simple manner in which he named his work. Modern Diodorus' liberal use of earlier historians underlies the harsh opinion of the author of the 1911 Encyclopaedia Britannica article on Bibliotheca Historica. The faults of Diodorus arise partly from the nature of the undertaking, and the awkward form of annals into which he has thrown the historical portion of his narrative. He shows none of the critical faculties of the historian, merely setting down a number of unconnected details. His narrative contains frequent repetitions and contradictions, is without colouring, and monotonous, and his simple diction, which stands intermediate between pure Attic and the colloquial Greek of his time, enables us to detect in the narrative the undigested fragments of the materials which he employed. As damaging as this sounds, other more contemporary classical scholars are likely to go even further. Diodorus has become infamous particularly for adapting his tales Admirum Graecorum Glorium, to the greater glory of the Greeks, leading one prominent author to refer to him as one of the two most accomplished liars of antiquity 4-5, the other being Tizias. Far more sympathetic is the estimate of C.H. Old Father, who wrote in the introduction to his translation of Diodorus. While characteristics such as these exclude Diodorus from a place among the abler historians of the ancient world, there is every reason to believe that he used the best sources and that he reproduced them faithfully. His first book, which deals almost exclusively with Egypt, is the fullest literary account of the history and customs of that country after Herodotus. Books IIV cover a wide range, and because of their inclusion of much mythological material are of much less value. In the period from 480 to 301 BC, which he treats in analytic fashion and in which his main source was the universal history of Ephorus, his importance varies according as he is the sole continuous source, or again as he is paralleled by superior writers. To the fifty years from 480 to 430 BC Thucydides devotes only a little more than thirty chapters, Diodorus covers it more fully, 11.37 to 12.38, and his is the only consecutive literary account for the chronology of the period. 
For the years 362 to 302 BC Diodorus is again the only consecutive literary account, and Diodorus offers the only chronological survey of the period of Philip, and supplements the writers mentioned in contemporary sources in many matters. For the period of the successors to Alexander, 323 to 302 BC, books 18 XX, he is the chief literary authority and his history of this period assumes, therefore, an importance which it does not possess for the other years. Editorial History The Editio Princeps of Diodorus was a Latin translation of the first five books by Poggio Bracciolini at Bologna in 1472. The first printing of the Greek original, at Basel in 1535, contained only books 16-20, and was the work of Vincentius Opsipoius. It was not until 1559 that all of the surviving books, and surviving fragments of books 21 to the end were published by Stephanus at Geneva. <laughs>